Let's imagine that this is your Etsy shop and this is a listing. So you start to fill your shop with listings. Now we're going to assume that every single one of these listings is a well-researched listing. So that means you've gone to Etsy, you've gone into the market, you are researching designs that are selling well, that are best sellers, and you are adding those elements into your own designs. You are targeting niches that have high demand. You see that there's lots of best sellers in those particular niches. And that is what is directing the choices that you're making while you're listing. And now let's imagine for a moment that the gold listings in our Etsy shop are not making us any money but the blue listings are. They say that 80% of your profits will come from 20% of your efforts. And I have found that to be fairly true in my own Etsy shop. Lots of listings that aren't doing much for me, but those couple that really are making money consistently. Today I'm going to show you a strategy that I've been using for about the last two years of my three-year-old Etsy shop. This strategy has helped me get a lot more listings like this in my Etsy shop. Hi there, I'm Simply Shauna and on this channel we talk all about opening an Etsy shop, connecting it with a print-on-demand company that prints your items and ships them out for you. I'm a former fourth grade teacher that was able to quit my job about a year and a half into my Etsy journey and now I am a full-time six-figure Etsy seller and sharing my journey online with you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create two blocks of SEO so that you can list each of your designs twice with a different set of SEO. Let's unpack that statement for a second in case you're a beginner. SEO is your search engine optimization phrases. That is the title that you give your listing and the tags that you give your listing. Your title can have up to 140 characters and you're allowed to have 13 tags, which are going to be short phrases that describe your products in that listing. Throughout this video, I'm going to be calling it a block of SEO. And when I call it a block of SEO, I'm referring to the title and the tags for that listing. The purpose of SEO or your title and your tags for your Etsy listing is so that Etsy knows who to put your listing in front of. A customer sits down, they open up Etsy as the marketplace that they wanna search and shop on. They go into the search bar and they type what they're looking for. Maybe they're looking for a Christmas candle gift, or maybe they're looking for a Christmas couple's shirt. Whatever it is they're looking for, they type that in. And then Etsy starts pulling different listings that have sellers who attached those words to their listings. They're first going to be interested in showing someone an exact match. So that means you would have a phrase in your title or in your tags that match what the customer wrote exactly word for word. There's other things that are playing into this as well. If you have a listing that has already been interacted with and it's been bumped up in the algorithm, then it has a better chance also, even if it's not an exact match, to land in front of that customer. And as that customer starts scrolling through search results, Etsy will start also placing in front of them items that have the same words in those listings, but maybe they're not an exact match. So your item could still turn up in front of somebody that let's say they wrote Christmas candle gift, but on your listing you had candle gifts for Christmas. Yours could still show up for that customer, but maybe it just wouldn't be in the first round of listings that's shown to them. Hopefully now we're all on the same page when I mention SEO blocks and when we're talking about SEO. The purpose of what I'm showing you today is to actually come up with two blocks of SEO for your listings. And we're going to be doing that so we can A-B test all of our designs. An A-B test is when you change one thing in your listing. An A-B test, also referred to as split testing, is something that you can do to learn about the market and to make sure that you have improved and better listings moving forward based off what you learn. So here we're going to be learning about which phrases 
are working best for your designs. When you split test or A-B test something, you only want to change one thing. So today we're going to brainstorm and come up with well-researched SEO blocks, two different ones, different titles and tags for all of our listings for Christmas. And when we go to use those blocks of SEO, we're going to make sure that we only change that one thing. So that means I create a design, I mock it up, so I place it on the pictures of the t-shirts that I have, and then when I list it, I make sure I use the same mock-up photos, the same thumbnail, that main image on your listing. I'm using the same descriptions. I'm using the same pricing strategy. If there's a loss leader, one item that's priced cheaper than everything else, I'm using the same loss leader strategy in both of my listings. If I'm running ads on one of them, then I'm running ads on both of them. This way, the only thing that I'm testing and the only thing that can be changing the results of how the listings do is that block of SEO. And over time, I'll start to learn which block of SEO works better, and that way I can adopt that block of SEO to use in the future. Just to show you how powerful this strategy can be and just how many more blue listings it can bring us, these are results from my shop, not last Christmas, but the Christmas prior. I actually did more of an ABC test and I tested three blocks of SEO. You'll see here that the results were quite drastic. One of the listings got zero dollars revenue, zero profits, zero sales. Another one got 14 sales, so I made a couple bucks. But that last listing there made well over a thousand sales and made me over $30,000 revenue. When I started listing in this particular sub niche of Christmas last year, I did not A-B test anymore. I went ahead and used the block of SEO that was doing great. I opened up the stats in my shop and I could see exactly which phrases were getting the most hits. And you can also go into the listings that maybe didn't do as well, but we're still getting hits and see which ones or which phrases were at the top of that list and possibly create a new block of SEO with all of the superstar phrases from the different blocks of SEO that you've been testing. We're going to be specifically designing in the sub niche of couples shirts. I don't ever design in somewhere super generic like just Christmas shirts. Now I might use that in my title or my tags, but I would always have something more specific in mind as I am designing. And even with couple shirts, there's a lot of different directions we could sub-niche down there as well. We could sub-niche down to couples that are needing baby announcement type shirts because they're expecting a little one. Or we could go into a niche like religious shirts, so Christmas, like religious Christmas shirts for couples to wear. Honestly, there's dozens of different directions we could take with this and we'll actually find some as we are looking for our chunks of SEO. So remember, we are trying to make as many of these blue listings as we can, the ones that are gonna make us money. And one of the things that will help us to do that is to make sure that we're always niching down to more specific areas. So here again, we're going to be working on couples Christmas shirts. If you are staying more broad, you're filling your shop with lots of listings that are never gonna sell. And I would have to have a different color kiss in here to represent those because all of these already are the types of listings that could sell well. It's just that 80% of our profits are gonna come from 20% of our efforts. If you fill your Etsy shop with, let's say a red wrapped kiss, which are the kind that don't even have a chance of going very far, then your blue kisses are, you might not even have any. You might not be able to gain any blue kisses from that or blue listings from that. First, we're gonna hop on the computer. I'm gonna show you exactly how it would look as I build two sets or two blocks of SEO in my own shop for myself. And it would be the same process if you wanted to add a third block as well. You would just need to pull additional listings to study in order to get enough phrases for your three blocks of SEO. While we're chatting, I am going to reveal three of my super secret hacks that do help me to get more of those listings that are going to sell well for me. And whenever I'm about to reveal one of those, you'll know to perk up your ears and listen a little bit better because I'll say, hack alert. 
Here we are on the back end of Etsy where our title is going to go. We have 140 characters we can put here. And down here we get to put our 13 tags. So we're going to want to make sure we pull enough to fill both of those places twice. In this video here, I go into detail of what it looks like when I am putting one block of SEO together. And in this video here, I go into how I run A-B tests in my shop. I will link both of these videos down below as if you're interested in what we're talking about today. These are probably really great resources for you to watch next. Now in that A-B testing video that I was just mentioning, this one here, a lot of people ask me, but what does it look like when you put two blocks of SEO together? Because it can be kind of tricky to know how different to make them. So what I'm sharing with you today is what it looks like when I'm doing it. It's what I have found that works for me. And it's what helped me get the results that I shared just a few minutes ago from those three different blocks of SEO and how crazy awesome one of them was doing and the other two were not. The first thing we're going to do in this process is head over to Etsy and find some blocks of SEO that are doing really great that we can study. Now in my graphic here, I mentioned that I usually use three to five blocks of SEO when I am just doing one, building one block of SEO for myself. But since we are building two blocks of SEO, I said five to seven listings or blocks of SEO for us to grab and study. But really, we're probably going to use more than that. If I were to redo the graphic right now, I'd probably say to suggest maybe 10 to 15, just so you're not constantly going back to find more to make sure that you have enough when you're looking at your listings and trying to pull enough different phrases out. Two. We want to study other best sellers to help us collect the best bits of SEO. We could do that by going over to Etsy and in the search bar, we're going to type in Christmas shirt here and we're going to get our results, but we're going to filter by star seller since that's an option here, best sellers not, but we'll go ahead and filter by star seller and then we can replace the word star with the word best. And once we've done that, all the best sellers come to the first page. Here we could see a little bestseller badge on this shirt or the sweatshirt so we know we're looking at a bestseller. The next thing we want to pay attention to is 20 in the cart. When you go into the listings, you can see there at the top it says plus 20 in the cart or it might say in demand. 21 people bought this in the last 24 hours. We know then that we're looking at listings that are selling well right now. So they're probably using pretty good SEO or search engine optimization phrases, their title and their tags. Next, we wanna pay attention to taking these bits of SEO from different shops. As we're collecting our SEO, let's make sure we choose five to seven different shops to get our blocks of SEO. That way we're not relying on any one shop that might have something going on that we don't know about. Maybe they rank really well in that niche so they can get away with using all more broad terms. Or perhaps they're using a Pinterest strategy or some other type of strategy where they're driving their own traffic. Last but not least, I like to take at least one of the blocks of SEO that I'm going to be studying from a smaller shop. So here you could see they only have 47 reviews. So they are a smaller shop and they've got the bestseller badge there on this listing. So I'm thinking they're probably using pretty good search engine optimization phrases in order to be seen and compete with other bigger shops. So I like to grab some of these when I'm putting my phrases and my title and my tags together. For the sake of time, I went ahead and did this part off camera. It probably took me maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And I just opened up Etsy and I started doing searches. I started with couples Christmas shirts and I started looking at bestsellers in this area. I just grabbed the title and threw it in this Word document here so you could see the research that I'd done with a little snapshot of the listing I was looking at for it. While I'm doing this, I'm getting other ideas because I'm looking at the titles that these listings are using. And that makes me think, oh, well, let me search this next thing next. And it's like this little bestseller hunt with related searches. So I use, I started with Christmas couples shirts. That was the first search. I noticed that a lot of 
of the listings were this Jingle Balls shirt, which is a completely inappropriate, raunchy humor one. But they are doing really well, and they already have bestsellers on them. So then I went and I did a, sh a search for Jingle Balls shirt, which led to another one that's really popular, Chestnuts. Um, I did a search on that. I also did just a more of a generic shirt, a generic search of couples shirts to see what types of phrases are being used there. And right now I'm going to say hack alert because I'm going to give you a hack. We are doing this research here. I'm doing this research in the first week of October. By the time this video is out, it might be the second week of October. And there aren't a ton of bestseller designs yet. A lot of the stuff that, are, that is popping up is Halloween stuff for me when I'm trying to do these searches. So we can't wait until we are flooded with bestsellers the time has passed us by and we should have already had listings up by the time there's a, a bunch of best-selling couples Christmas items. So right now, what we need to be doing, the hack here, is that I use Everbee. So some of the listings that I pulled don't say bestseller right now, but because these listings were pulling up for me, that means that either they've sold well in the past, even if they're not getting a ton of sales right now and don't necessarily have their bestseller badge right this minute, maybe they did last year, or there may be a new listing and Etsy's you know, putting it in front of me to see how customers are interacting with that new listing. That's what Etsy does with a new listing. So I went ahead and clicked into some of these listings and I do have a paid tool, it's called Everbee, and I'm able to click into that and I'm able to see what the background on that listing is. And I can actually look to see if it had sales last year and if it was likely a really good seller. So for example, we can see this one here when I clicked into it and I use Everbee to look at the details on this listing. It doesn't currently have a bestseller badge on it, but it was listed 12 months ago. So it was probably listed last October and it would have made most of its sales last year coming into the holiday season. It had 491 total sales last year. So that is excellent. And now I know that I'm looking at a listing that's done well and it probably has great SEO or great title and tags. I did hear someone recently say that 99% of Etsy sellers don't use a paid tool to help them do their SEO research. And I haven't checked that statistic, but that kind of blew my mind a little bit. I personally did wait until I was making a little bit of money before I started investing in paid tools like that. But I can say that this is one of my favorite ways to use it and it certainly has made me many times over what I've invested into it. I do have a link to Everbee down in the description below, but if you are using a different paid tool, it probably has a feature similar to this that you can use to look this up. And this is invaluable so that you can be early to the market with great solid SEO, even when it's hard to find those best sellers. Now, if you are not using a paid tool and that's just not in the cards right now, don't be disheartened. Keep at it, do this process and choose the best sellers that you can find and supplement that with, with other phrases that make sense. And I have a great hack for you coming up that will take a while to pay off, but doesn't cost you anything in paid tools. But first let's jump back on the computer and get these blocks of SEO put together. I have two Word documents open here on my computer. On the left, I have a whole bunch of blocks of SEO, those blocks I was just showing you that I've collected. And on the right, I've got a spot where I can start collecting my two blocks of SEO, and then a spot here for other more specific phrases to consider. So I'm going to go through and just pull the phrases, deleting them out of my document on the left, and pulling them over to my document on the right. These more specific phrases that I can consider depending on what that listing has. So, so far I've got over here, bend over, and I'll show you, that's really a movie line, so we might wanna stay away from that, as it could be protected under copyright, even if we don't see it under trademark. I pulled gingerbread, chest and nuts. We'll go over that one in a bit, but that's super popular. Uh, jingle balls. These are the, the, the sarcastic, kind of inappropriate humor ones that sell well every single year on couple shirts. They've been selling well for a while. And I'll also take just a quick second to go ahead and delete 
some words that just don't make sense for t-shirt listings because that's what we're going to be working on, right? So I pulled one of these blocks of SEO, one of these titles from an SVG or PNG listing, and I'll go through and just delete those terms as well since we won't use those in our t-shirt listing, but we might like some of the other phrases that people are using in order to look those similar types of listings up in SVG or PNG file format. This will make it a lot easier for me when I do go to work on all of my listings because at this, I'm setting up the groundwork. I'm doing the work right now for my SEO that I'm going to be using for the next, you know, two months, the entire time that I am listing these for, for the holidays. So this will make it a lot easier for me when I do something more specific to go look at this list as I'm saving these from, you know, best selling listings. Um, I did grab a Thanksgiving couples one there and I took off all of the Thanksgiving words. My goal there was to maybe use some of the couples or the shirt words that they were using or phrases that they were using. Here's the list I came up with, bend over and I'll show you, gingerbread, chest and nuts, jingle balls. Uh, I'll let you read that next phrase to yourself, another inappropriate humor one, chestnuts, ornaments, shirt, comfort colors, I don't do matching, reindeer and flannel were all phrases that I thought were a little too specific for the listings, the more generic listing that I wanted to put together, but all things that I would consider adding back into specific listings that conveyed more of this idea. And also this is something that will help me generate ideas. So when I'm looking at this, I might think, oh, oh, gingerbread, sure. That's a bestseller. I'm gonna go do some gingerbread stuff for couples. Or ornaments, I'm gonna do some ornament stuff for couples. Or I don't do matching, I'm gonna work on that, or reindeer. So this also helps me with ideas as I'm designing. Back to all of these blocks of SEO, all of these titles that we grabbed from bestsellers. Here I've crossed out all of those terms that I pulled out, and now we're just gonna go through and we're going to analyze this. We're simply looking for repeated phrases. We're looking to notice some things to learn from these blocks of SEO. The first thing I'm noticing is Christmas couples. I see that repeated quite a bit throughout many of the bestsellers. Christmas couples, I highlight it there in red. Next thing I'm noticing is all of the different words that are attached to Christmas couples. We've got matching t-shirt, shirts, t-shirt with a dash, shirts. Next, I've noticed that holiday matching sweatshirt was there twice. I went ahead and highlighted that in blue. Actually, we've got holiday tea here as well. I'll go ahead and, and highlight that in blue since it's another phrase with the word holiday. Let's see what else we can find. In purple, I've got couples Christmas. So in red, we saw Christmas couple quite a, t quite a few times. And now we're seeing a couple times here, the other way around, couples Christmas. And in orange, we've got Christmas shirt or Christmas shirts. Etsy says we don't have to worry about plurals, so we don't have to be too concerned with the fact of whether we're gonna add that S or not to shirt. In green, I've gone ahead and added sweatshirt and pajamas. I'll have to add PJs there as well. All of these words, like these item or product words that we can use. And in yellow, I've added Christmas pajamas. I see that exact match there a couple of times throughout. I'm making note of a couple of different adjectives used throughout by circling them. I see cute, funny was used a couple of times, trendy. I've personally used trendy a couple of times and I never really see much traction on that word, but maybe that's because I just haven't used it enough times. Funny, I've definitely seen traction for people like to buy funny things. At the bottom, I have two little boxes there that I'm just making a note of the different product words that were used. For shirt, we see shirt, t-shirt without a dash, t-shirt without a dash, tops, sweatshirt. A lot of times I see tees. I don't know if I saw it 
in this particular set of titles, but we could probably add the word tease there since I have seen it so often. And then in the other box there for more of the pajama types of words, we saw pajamas and PJs. Let's take a second and notice something interesting about the beginning of most of these titles. I'll go through and read the very first term for you, and I just want you to think about what each of these kind of has in common. Bend over and I'll show you. Christmas gingerbread sweatshirts, chest and nuts, jingle balls, SVG, chest nuts, Christmas shirts, she's my sweet potato shirt, that was a Thanksgiving one, but it's doing the same pattern. Comfort colors, that's kind of different. That's just if you're selling a comfort colors item. Our first Christmas pajamas. I don't do matching Christmas shirt. Is there twice? Reindeer couple matching. So did you notice what they all have in common? If you do, pause the video for a second. Go tell us in the comments if you noticed it. They all, every single one of them, started with a very specific phrase or kind of niche like sub niche so i thought that was interesting and i've never really noticed when i was putting titles together that every single one of the titles i grabbed in a particular session a seo session like we're doing right now all of them did that usually some of them will start with more broad terms like just christmas shirts or couples christmas shirts but every single one of these bestsellers started with this more specific term now that I have my list and I've made my observations about this, we can start going ahead and putting our blocks of SEO, our titles together. Now a block of SEO, it's gonna be our title and we also have to come up with our tags. The title is going to be 140 characters and we get 13 tags. We're going to focus on the blocks of the titles first. We're going to focus on those those titles that are 140 characters first. In block one, I'm grabbing here Christmas couple since it was my very favorite phrase from the research we did. It just seemed like that one was there the, and repeated the most times. So that's going to go right at the beginning and I'm going to attach matching shirt to it. Christmas, Christmas couple matching shirt. For block two, let's go a different direction and yellow, that yellow term there, Christmas pajamas, was there quite a bit as well. So Christmas pajamas, and I'm going to add the word tops, not so much because it was in our research, but because I want to make sure I'm clear with customers about what exactly it is that this is offering, that I'm selling, because I'm not actually selling the shirt and the pants for the pajamas. And just a quick word on the word pajamas, since it is a really popular word to use at Christmas time, I'll spare you from learning the hard way some of the mistakes that I've learned. Take a quick look with me here at the Etsy handbook. It says, remember, while you want to be descriptive and appeal to buyers, make sure you're using accurate descriptions that follow our policies and our titles, descriptions, and tags. Etsy prohibits the sale of products whose presentations may mislead buyers, including mislabeling. For example, don't describe your listing as cashmere if your products are not made of cashmere. Learn more about Etsy's house rules here. So we wouldn't want to mislead a customer by accident by calling something pajamas when it's really just the shirt. So especially for that first phrase that you choose on Etsy, they will see in search results the picture of your item. And for a lot of these pictures, it's the real, one of the really popular mock-up photos to go with is where it is matched with uh, some pajama pants. It looks really cute, looks really Christmassy, looks really cozy. And a lot of the times that's what people are using the shirts for as their tops for the pajamas. So those mock-up photos tend to do really well with converting the customers. On that search page, all the customer is going to see is the first phrase that you placed in your title. So they're gonna quickly see whatever words you put there. And if all it says is pajamas, they might quickly infer that, oh, I'm buying the full set. It just says, and it even just says right here, pajamas. In the example I pulled here in the photo, they did write shirts only. It was kind of hard to see. I would 
suggest doing that bigger. And as you can see, the title here underneath just says pajamas. So they might run into an issue. The reason that I bring this up is because I learned this the hard way and year before last, I was using mock-up photos that showed pajamas in them and I did not make it clear in my listing photo and I did have the word pajamas in my title and I didn't say anything else about it in the description about it only being the shirts. You wanna place as many places that you can, you wanna put that it's only the shirts. And I wound up having to give several hundred dollars back to someone who placed a large order because they were irate that they did not also receive pajama pants. And on the topic of pajamas, you'll wanna make sure that you don't have any children's sizes available in any listings that you're using the word pajamas in and you don't wanna use any other words like children or youth or toddlers in your SEO along with the word pajamas. We are not allowed to market our t-shirts as pajama or pajama tops for children because there are special rules around selling children's pajamas. And last year, a bunch of listings were taken down and they were not allowed to go back up. You couldn't fix them and put them back up. So if you had a bestseller and you were consistently selling from this listing every day, if Etsy took it down because you were selling uh, basically an illegal item, you weren't allowed to be selling children's pajamas, even though you're not selling the pants, you're marketing it as pajamas, They were that listing was dead. You were not allowed to fix it and resend that listing out. You would have had to just start with a fresh listing with no sales history on it. Back to putting our blocks of SEO together safely so we don't get ourselves in trouble with the pajamas. I have gone ahead and added to block one matching Christmas party shirt. And then in the second block, I'm going to go with couples Christmas shirt. The next phrase I'm going with is holiday matching tea for block one. And I'm actually going to go with holiday matching in the second block also, but I'm going to end that phrase with pajamas. So holiday matching tea in blue for block one, holiday matching pajamas in blue for block two. Christmas shirts in orange to block one. That was there numerous times throughout our research over there to the left. And I'm going to go with his and her PJs in block two. I'm going to predict a question you might be asking yourself right now. You might be thinking, okay, she put couples Christmas in the top block. And in the bottom block, I switched the words and put Christmas couple. And I did that because I saw both of those combinations repeated in the sets of SEO that we pulled to study. It is true that we can show up in searches that are not exact matches. So let's say that first block where I did, I think I did couples Christmas. I will show up in searches, could potentially show up in searches that had those words flipped anyways. But that second listing I'm putting together that does have the words reversed, I would be more likely to show up in that search first. So while I can still rank for these words reversed and even use in different combinations of phrases because Etsy can pull that I use this word here and this word over here in this phrase and this word over here in this phrase, you are more likely to show up if you are an exact match. And because both of those phrases were used repeatedly in the chunks of SEO that we studied that were bestsellers, I would like to use them in both of my listings. I could have chosen to put both combinations in one listing and maybe another day that I'd be sitting here putting this together, I might do that. So there's no real right or wrong thing here. What I am trying to do is avoid using the same exact phrases with the same exact words in either of the listings. I am trying to use them, you know, as many different phrases as I can, which is why I went more of a pajamas heavy strategy in the bottom here and more of a shirt heavy strategy and the top but in the end i am going to be repeating words but i am trying not to repeat the same combination of words in the same order in either of my listings i've gone ahead and added mr and mrs christmas t-shirts with a dash to the top block of seo and now i just kind of want to see where we're at so I'm opening my Etsy listing and I'm gonna copy and paste that first block in to see how close I am. And actually, we are three letters, three characters too much. 
So I'm going to just fix that up a, a little bit and get it down to 140 volt. Here we go, that's perfect. Now I've got it to exactly 140. And now let's check the second block of SEO. And we have a little bit of space left to go there. We've got 92 characters used out of 140. I've gone back to my research and I've gone ahead and added here in our block two, matching Christmas PJs. So I am using that word matching again, but I was looking at some more bestsellers and I saw matching Christmas being a match there that I, that I liked and I wanted to have in here. And I also went ahead and did funny Xmas t-shirts. And I wanted to squeeze a word in there that people might be using in lieu of Christmas, a synonym that people might be using in lieu of Christmas. You're not trying to put a bad set of SEO together and a good set of SEO. You're just trying two different things out in your two sets of SEO. I tried to color code everything here so you'd see exactly where I grabbed our phrases from our research. You might have noticed that I started each of our blocks of SEO with one of the terms that I saw were repeated the most. I did double up on a couple of phrases. I see I used Christmas shirts in both blocks. In the top block, it was funny Christmas shirts. In the bottom block, it wound up being couples Christmas shirts. In the top block, I said matching Christmas. And I said that in the bottom block as well. In the top block, it was finished with matching Christmas party shirt, which was an exact phrase taken from our research. In the bottom block, it was matching Christmas PJs. I have in black there for the bottom block, phrases that I didn't necessarily lift straight out of our research. I got Xmas from prior knowledge in my shop, knowing that that has popped up in my stats. So I figured I'd use a synonym here since we had a little extra space. I wrote those bits in black. I also was thinking that, remember how in the beginning when we were researching, we saw a lot of these listings started out with a very specific phrase like chestnuts. So now as I am putting these listings together, I might take out those some of those phrases that I wrote in black and I might pop in those more specific. So if I do something gingerbread related, I might, instead of using some of these terms that I have in black, I might pop them out and try gingerbread or chestnuts or whatever fits with the listing or the design that I'm putting together. We're about to put the tags together for our two listings. And if you're still here, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, the video wound up a little longer than I expected. If you are finding value, don't forget to take a second to smash the like button. And I'll reveal hack number two real quick for you right now. I would actually go ahead and get a third listing out of my designs. And it wouldn't really be an A-B test or A-B-C test because I'm actually going to change that front mock-up photo. And in an A-B test, you wouldn't change that front mock-up photo. I'm going to get a whole nother listing by doing a mock-up photo of sweatshirts and making that my front mock-up photo since sweatshirts sell really well during the holidays and during the winter time. If I had not planned on doing this, I would have gone ahead and added the word sweatshirt into one of the blocks of SEO I was already using since we did see that word used a couple of times in our research. But instead I figured I would save all of those phrases and I'll, I'll flush on the screen right now what that block of SEO might look like. I wouldn't do a ton of additional research to do this. I would just take the phrases I already saw that were working and add the word sweatshirt and sweater to it. I'm gonna put a mock-up in the front that is sweaters, and I'll probably throw the word pajamas and shirt in there as also. Super duper that we have our titles, but we still need to go ahead and put our tags together. So we're gonna head back over to Etsy. You could go and pull some more bestsellers or use any phrases that you had left from those bestsellers. We really didn't have a whole lot of phrases left. So we're going back over to Everbee, and this is actually the way I like to do it. I like to, we're going back over to Etsy. I like to use Everbee. On Everbee, I can go to this analyze listing tab, and then I can get you know, those stats for the listing. This one's pretty cool that it sold 1,450 times and it was listed last late, probably late October or early November because it says 11 months ago. And I can pull all the keywords down here. These are all the tags this shop is using. 
and I can copy all of them. And then I can go over to a Word document and I can paste them into my Word document, which I'm gonna do this for a couple of different listings. If you don't have Everbee, you can go down to the bottom of this listing and at the bottom you'll see the tags basically that they used right down here. And you can go ahead and jot them down from down here. Here we're back on Everbee and I can actually expand this information and take a look at our listing tags over here. I'm going to pull this tab out so we can see them. On this side, we've got our phrases. Notice that they're all two or three words. So they're long tail keywords, not just the word Christmas in a tag, but husband Christmas they have here. Then they've got the volume. The volume is the estimated average searches per month on Etsy. That's how many searches customers are coming onto Etsy and typing this phrase in. That's their Everbee's estimation of that. This is the number of competing listings there are for this keyword. So. On Etsy, there's 177,440 other listings that say Husband Christmas. And Everbee is analyzing this and giving this keyword score a 20. So you might notice down here 190, that's got a great keyword score, but the volume is only 40, which means only 40 people are coming on and looking for this. So, you know, you kind of kind of keep that in mind when you're choosing your phrases. However, um, this phrase is in the very first part of that title. Remember, all of them were really specific. I think it said bend over and I'll show you. These two uh, were right in the beginning. So even though there's not a lot of people looking them up, just something to note that that was in the very beginning of that person's title. And whatever you put at the very beginning of your title has the biggest impact on your searches like it's the most it's like, like the prime real estate of your title the, that very first phrase uh, i think th uh, there's a couple of interesting ones here the 30s are getting my attention funny couple shirt just describes the shirt so well and i would love to see the word christmas in there let's see what else they've got xmas matching t so there's that xmas that's a 30 and Christmas couple tea has a 20. Off camera, I went ahead and did this a couple more times. I've got five listings here where I went and grabbed the tags. And I also went ahead and highlighted in green the tags that caught my eye as I was working on this that had scores that were a little bit higher than the others. Maybe had 10, 20, or 30, while a lot of them had a score of zero, just so I could kind of keep that in mind as I'm making my decisions. Now I'm going to go ahead and look for patterns just like I did with my titles. I'm going to look for repeated phrases that really go along with the type of listings I'm planning to put together. First, I'll quickly remove any tags that are too specific into kind of that extra spot to consider on a listing by listing case in case I do something in that specific niche like the chest and nuts tags. I also like to use Everbee's keyword research tool and you can get to that over to the left and it was a little cut off here, but it's keyword research. That's what I clicked on. And I'm testing out this word here. I just threw this one in here, matching couple T. And it gave me that, and that has a zero. But it also gives me some other things to look through. And I liked matching couple, which was 40. So even if you did matching couple T, matching couple is within that as an exact match. And then I kind of ignore stuff like this, matching couple S. Um, so that, I'm going to skip right over that because it doesn't really make sense. But matching couples gifts, I liked this one, 50, and I haven't run that run into that in my tags. So sometimes I like to play around with this feature also to get some extra info. I've gone ahead and striked through any of these more specific ones like the chestnuts, chestnuts shirt, gingerbread sweets down here. I've also gone ahead and crossed through anything that I just didn't think was going to work for Christmas. Like this listing was not a Christmas listing. So I crossed through some of the terms that weren't going to be good matches for 
my Christmas couple listings. I've also crossed through a couple that I think might be like a trademark issue, like Griswold, since that's from a movie. And then things like Matching Family, I went ahead and pulled over along with those more specific ones like Gingerbread Sweets and all that to that extra document where I'm keeping track of those more specific types of tags and phrases that I can add on a grouping of listings basis by basis. So for example, if I were working on, let's say the chest and nuts types of designs, then I would use some of those types of titles, some of those types of phrases and tags and just that grouping of listings I'm putting together. So maybe I spend a week, you know, putting 15, 20 of those together. I'd do all of those listings the same with those extra bits of SEO in them. And then when I switch themes, I'll switch it out and use more appropriate phrases for the next theme. Some things I'm noticing so far, we have in green here the ones that we took note of the score. In red, I have, well, oops, I didn't mean to make that one red, couple shirt, but the rest, the Christmas shirt, Christmas shirt, Christmas t-shirt with a dash, Christmas shirt without a dash, Christmas sweatshirt, Christmas apparel. So all the different ways they were using the word Christmas to describe the cl clothing, Christmas clothing. And then I, in blue, I've got Christmas gift, Christmas gift, holiday gift, Xmas holiday gift, Christmas gift. I'm going to want to use those. So these are probably the first couple of things I'm going to be thinking of as I'm filling in my tags. All right, let's start building these. I'm going to take the very first phrase I put for each block. My very favorite phrase that I put together for each block is that prime real estate spot. I'm going to pull that down into my tags. That's the only one I copy. Usually the first one or two phrases that I think are the very best match. Something that you have in your title and repeated in your tags, you will have more likelihood of showing up in front of someone because they're repeated. But I don't want to repeat everything because I want to use my other tags as an opportunity to show up for other things. And this is just how I do it and it's been working well for me. So I am I went ahead on the bottom and did Christmas pajamas. I didn't pull tops because that was not from the research. That was more for not confusing the customer. So I went ahead and grabbed couples Christmas shirts there too. I probably won't be able to fit couples Christmas shirts. I'll probably have to change it to couples Christmas and Christmas shirts. And couple Christmas couple matching shirt from above, I split that with a comma so it'll all fit within each of the tags. The tags can only be so long. So I've done most of the work here and I'll show you what I chose in just a minute. I'm leaving two free spaces for each. I'll show you real quick how I check to make sure I'm on the right track. Here's uh, block one and I just come over here I've separated everything with ta with commas so that when I do that I can make sure everything fits so I have two spots left I'm intentionally leaving two spots on each block of SEO so I can use some of those more specific ones in the more niched down spots and I'll have some nice spaces there that I can go pull from or that I have available to me to add that here's block two, I add, and I'm good to go here, and I've got two spaces left. So let's take a look at what I wound up going with. For block one, we had Christmas couple and matching shirt up here because it came from our SEO, the first phrases in our title. Then I went with holiday shirt, his and hers shirts, husband Christmas, funny couples Christmas. These green ones came from some of these green ones I highlighted over here that had some nice scores from Everby. Then I went and these black ones here, Ugly Christmas and Couple Matching Tea, were just some other ones that I thought were good that I grabbed throughout the listings we were studying. In red, Christmas Apparel, one of those terms that I had highlighted in red to remind myself of the different ways they were expressing Christmas clothing. And then in blue, I've got Christmas gift and Xmas holiday gift. In blue, I had reminded myself to pay attention to gift tags. In block two, I've got Christmas pajamas, couples Christmas, and Christmas shirts, which came from my block of SEO that was in my title. In green, I pulled those phrases that had the better scores. 
the better keyword scores. And I've got Xmas matching tee and girlfriend gift here. And black, some other ones that I pulled that I thought would make sense. I went kind of gift heavy here, gift for wife, gift for husband. Matching couple tee. I think I had couple matching somewhere, but not matching couple. So I went ahead with that because I saw it over in our research. And red, Christmas t-shirt with a dash, couple shirt. Which I didn't mean to put in red, I just meant to put that in black. And then holiday gift in blue, one of those gift ones. And then I've got two extra spaces for each of them that I can go down into my other more specific phrases and I could just pull some of these for that group of listings where I'm working with that particular sub niche of the pajamas or of the Christmas couple shirts. I just want to mention here that this is really what it looks like when I sit down to do this. That's all I've shown you today is what this looks like when I sit down to do this. Here we are. You are at my table with me and this is what it looks like. The most important thing here is not to get caught up with scrutinizing over every little choice you're making. Move, go, move, go. Get it listed, get it listed, get it listed. Because if you are spending all your time doing this and scrutinizing over every decision you're making, you're missing out on the most important piece, which is the action that you need to take to get these items up and listed in your shop. Last but not least, hack number three. And this one's really my favorite one in terms of making sure we're getting lots of these types of listings in our shop. We wanna make sure we're preparing early. As we chatted about today, it was hard to grab our sets of SEO. It took a little extra digging because there aren't a ton of best-selling Christmas couples items yet. So I'm going to revisit this research in December. It's going to be too late at that time to be posting anything and, and hope to sell it. However, I can go ahead and do the research and save it so that I'm ready next year. Next year, I can start listening, listing in July. If you are looking for a resource to help you get lots of these types of listings in your shop, then you might wanna check the description out down underneath this video. I do have a resource available for you that will help you get prepared for the holidays this year and you can use again next year starting as early as July. That resource will help you get prepared for Q4. If you wanna keep hanging out, let's hang out here in this video, but not until after that tip from Tucker. Tucker, take it away.